Hello, my name is Hot Glue Gun, and I've decided to make a uh, short tutorial video since V1.0 release, V1.1 now, uh, for any new players joining squad or if you're just picking it back up, either way. I believe the most important thing to start with is the training range, uh, probably the best to do before you even step into a game. The range gives you the options to uh, do the infantry tutorial or the pilot tutorial. I'm not going to get into all that. You can; Those are self-explanatory. You can do them if you wish. But in Jensen's range, the training range, we have all the options for our different factions. And this will allow us to go in and experience all the different kits, all the different weapons and vehicles that the factions have to offer. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by selecting US and Russian. As we load in the game, we have all our uh, screen with our key bindings and all that sort of stuff on there. A little bit complex, but uh, we'll get the hang of it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just select the team I am defaulted to, which is US. This is the team selection screen that you will see upon entering a game. So I'm going to go ahead and select US, and this is our first uh, screen after the team selection, which is our deployment screen. So this gives us a breakdown of all the existing squads over here on the left-hand side, whether or not we have a commander, our role selection, and then our spawn points and our map as well. I'm going to go ahead and get started by just creating a squad and grabbing a squad league kit so I can demonstrate a few things. Uh, you'll notice that I have all three of these roles available to me. I can pick uh, the M4 with no sight, the uh, red dot, or the ACOG M150. Uh, typically, in a, in a regular game, these will be locked until you have a certain amount of members in your squad. So just uh, keep that in mind. I'm just going to go ahead and run ACOG, and I'm going to go ahead and pick up the commander slot to explain some of that stuff. All right, we're going to go ahead and get spawned in and take a few, take a quick look at a few of the things that the range has to offer and some of the basics to have a successful game of squad. So right away when we spawn in, we spawn at the HAB. This is the uh, HESCO looking structure, or HASCO, as they are called in squad. This is your main spawn point. This is how you uh, spawn into the game and do your work. And depending on the uh, different factions that you choose, of course, your your spawn locations will look different. This is the U.S. spawn, and this one over here is what uh, your typical Russian spawn point will look like. So pretty much the same idea, just different color, different color scheme. Uh, the next critical piece that we have to the HAB is our FOB radio. It just looks like a bunch of radios and a computer stacked up again. Depending on your faction, this will change a little bit, but this is necessary in order to place a spawn point. Next to that, we have our ammo box. This is how you resupply, rearm your weapons, get more ammo, change roles if you like, uh, change between roles, things like that. So press F to bring that up. Up here, we have our rearm. We're going to go ahead and click that. This will show all our gear. You can go in and click on each one of these individually to just pick up certain things or just click the rearm all in the in the middle. Of course, I'm full, so we're not going to see that right yet. But we have the different, uh, different tabs in here, command and support. So this will have your squad leader kits, your lead crewmen and pilots, and then your medics. Direct combat, riflemen, automatic riflemen, fire support, light anti-tanks, marksmen, grenadier. And then our specialists, we have our combat engineer, our heavy anti-tanks, or hats, and our machine gunner. So I'm going to go ahead and just demonstrate quickly, properly rearming. So I've gone ahead and wasted some wasted some brass, and I'm going to go to my ammo box, go to this these uh, three bullets to rearm, and you can see here I can click here, and it tells me the red is two. Uh, that is, it will cost me two ammo to resupply the bullets that I've fired. Or, see, so I can click here, or I can click here in the middle and just grab everything. And then, as you see, my hand reaches out. That confirms to me that I have rearmed properly. So moving on to our next spawn points. Uh, squad leaders have rallies. Only the squad leader will carry a rally point. It's on six with your binoculars. And this is something that you do have to rearm. It takes ammo now. So you can carry one of these at a time, and in between deployments, you will have to visit the ammo box and rearm either by clicking your rally point or just uh, the rearm all there in the middle. 
and you want to make sure once again your hand goes out and does that grabbing animation that confirms that you have rearmed. So rally points are great for assaulting uh, forward bases or anything like that where you haven't had a chance to get a hab up yet, a spawn point. And uh, it's great uh, for moving your squad around quickly. They have a rolling spawn, so you can spawn on this. Uh, I believe it's a timer of like 60 or 65 seconds in between spawns, and you can catch that in the middle. So if you die, give up, you might get lucky. It might have like 15 seconds on the rally and you'll get a quicker spawn rather than having to wait that full 60 seconds. These can be destroyed by enemies just uh, simply by walking near it. I don't know exactly what the range is. It's pretty close. I'd say within 5 or 10 meters max, uh, if an enemy gets close to it, it will just disappear, and your rally will be gone. So something to keep in mind. Uh, it's good to keep them hidden if possible. Keep them undercover. You don't want your guys spawning out in the open on the rally and just getting taken out by a machine gun or vehicle or something like that. So that pretty much covers the uh, the spawn points. We have our main spawn, our main base, which is gonna be our HABs. We have our, uh, we talked about the radios. Uh, you must have a radio in order to build the HAB. We'll get into that in a little bit. And we have our rally point. We also talked about the ammo box, uh, how to go in here, select a different kit if you like. I'm gonna switch to medic just to show. And uh, you must have the amount of ammo, it says. You see these three bullets with the 111 there at the bottom. Uh, that tells me I have to have 111 ammo on my, my base in order to switch to that kit. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to squad leader for the time being. Uh, Jensen's range is great for training. Uh, there's a lot of different areas you can go into. Just practice your weapon skills and grenades and things like that. There's the indoor target range. We have the... Uh, the uh, urban training area, urban terrain, and then you have your kill house over here. The kill house is pretty great. Um, I have almost 500 hours in squad, and I still run the kill house pretty much before every uh, game I play. When I boot up, I kind of just run through this just to just to warm myself up and just get used to the shooting. So you can come over here, uh, press F, Foxtrot, to uh, engage the targets, and then basically you just run through here and get after it. I usually try to go through here without getting shot, but sometimes you can't avoid it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give up and uh, we'll respawn over in the vehicle area just to take a quick look at some of the vehicles the game has to offer. So we're over in the vehicle area. Um, this uh, little mock-up display area is very important if you are fighting vehicles or uh, using a heavy anti-tank or light anti-tank kit. This basically describes every vehicle in the game. The armor rating uh, is color-coded and it will, you know, basically tells you where you need to place your shots in order to do the most damage on the vehicle. Um, every vehicle in the game is uh, takeable here. It's it's operable and uh, you can man it. Uh, in every typical server, however, you are going to require two crewmen to crew each vehicle. Most servers will probably ban you if you get in the tank and try to drive it by yourself. Um, they do require crewmen kits to both operate the vehicle, whether it be a tank or the Bradley or a, uh, a BMP or BTR, whatever you're using depending on your faction. Like I said, you will have to have a crewman kit to drive it, and you will have to have a crewman kit to operate the turret and shoot. Just keep note of that. So I am going to go ahead and grab a logistics truck, uh, Logi, and get some supplies, and we will build our first base. Here's my logistics truck, and every time you enter a logistics truck uh, that is spawned in at main, whether you're uh, starting a game or uh, a truck is, is blown up and respawns at main, it will spawn 50-50. So you'll have uh, half red and half yellow there at the bottom right. That is my ammo and my construction. So it'll spawn 50-50, and you can uh, choose your own um, level of supplies that you want in the truck if you like. Um, most people just run it 50-50 out of main, but you can 
uh, add ammo, remove construction, whichever you choose, whichever you know fits your needs. And in order to do that, you're going to want to uh, be on main, and you can you can identify that by the uh, flag in the upper right hand corner of my screen. So I'm on the Russian main, but it will allow me to uh, it'll allow me to get some supplies here. So by holding F and uh, moving your mouse over, it will bring up the radio menu here, and we can see we can unload construction, unload ammo load ammo or load construction. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unload a couple construction just to show you guys what that looks like. See, you can see up here I have 1500 and 1100 now and I'll go ahead and load some more ammo. And there we go, now we're full to our cap of 3000. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out here and show how to set up a base. Now, in a normal game of squad, you will need at least one squad member and a squad lead kit in order to place down a radio so that you can build a spawn point. And how you're going to do that is once you have your Lodgy parked where you like it and you want to build a, you want to build a base, go ahead and press T as in Tango to bring up your radio menu and you'll see this deploy fob radio option here. This is going to be how you're going to build your spawn points, uh, the, the bulk of the spawn points that you will use. So I'm going to go ahead and just place that down uh, wherever you choose. You want this to be covered, if at all possible, because it can be uh, blown up or damaged with shovels and all that good stuff that we'll get into. So now that I have my radio down, you'll see in the top left, we have a little tower castle looking mark with a blue bar. That indicates the radio health to me, so it's at full health. The zero ammo, zero construction tells me how much supply is on the point, and then spawn inactive. So there's there's no spawn point here, there's no hab, so we can't spawn. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go to the truck, press F to bring up the menu, unload all our construction supplies, and then we're gonna unload all our ammo. Typically you wanna unload the construction first so you can get the spawn point built as quickly as possible. We'll just leave it at that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and build a spawn point and a couple other items. So in order to build things, we're going to use the T Tango radio menu again and go to this little folder here just under the fob radio and it's going to be deployables and our spawn bunker is going to be in tech structures spawn bunker or hab right here and you can see the yellow 500 construction to build. We have 1100 so we're good to go. Go ahead and put that down and I'll go ahead and put an ammo crate which is also under the tech structures. And then we have a couple other options in here. You have fortifications, contains things like sandbags and ladders, razor wire. And then you have emplacements, mortars, uh, machine gun bunkers, and tow missiles. Those, of course, will change depending on which faction you are running. Now, I'm going to go to the truck and switch to a crewman so I can get a shovel and build this thing up really quick. Now, you can see in the top left-hand side, the spawn point is inactive. It will flop to active once I get this thing built enough. And you can see your progress on the yellow bar with the little shovel next to it. That tells me how far along we are. So we'll just give this some shovels and get our spawn point active. And uh, as you can see in the top left, our spawn just switched to active, so players can spawn here now. And we... Alright, that's good. Our ammo box, critical. This is how we're going to supply our ammo when we respawn. Very important to get ammo. This will also allow us to change kits or roles, as I said earlier, so you can select different guns. You can switch from squad lead to rockets to whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the squad lead kit and demonstrate a couple other things here. So I am the commander, and as you can see, the uh, little uh, exclamation point popped up and said command actions online. So that is going to allow me to uh, call in airstrikes, tactical support, and UAVs, things like that. You do have to be within a certain range. You have to be pretty close to a built spawn point uh, 
in order to use them. As I run away here, you'll see it pop up again, command actions offline. And then we'll get close and it pops back up that it's online. So you do have to be pretty close in order to get those command actions going. All right, I'm gonna head on over to the emplacement range and demonstrate a couple of the, uh, the weapons over there. The, uh, this training range is very good. It has vehicles spaced out at various intervals going all the way up to 1,500 meters away. So you can uh, you can shoot some stuff that's pretty far away. As you can see, this goes on quite a ways. Um, and uh, we have vehicle targets as well as some a few infantry spaced out at various intervals all the way up to 1,500. So really far out there. All right, I'm going to go through a few of these weapons here. I'm not going to demonstrate all of them just for time's sake, but uh, you have your two uh, anti-tank guided missiles. You have the uh, Russian Cornet. This is the laser guided. You have the US tow, the wire guided. We have the uh, anti-air. Uh, this is typically used for light vehicles and anti-infantry or anti-personnel. Um, there's not any aircraft you'll be shooting at. Dishka, heavy machine guns, pretty much self-explanatory, 50s. Uh, you have your SPG, which fires a nice heat round, so good for light vehicles, good for tracking vehicles. And then we have our mortars. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate a couple quick things on uh, on ranging. So if your kit does have a binocular, uh, you are fortunate enough to be able to range infantry pretty well. You can range vehicles decently as well, too. And I will try and demonstrate best how to do that. So I'll go to the uh, the 200 meter mark, and you can see on the bottom left we have the the slope that starts 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, or 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, whichever way you're looking at it there on the bottom left of the uh, binoculars, and then that uh, that solid uh, black line there with the 1.7 that indicates uh, 1.7 meters, which is the average height of your uh, your infantry. So if I want to range something, I'm going to put that black line on its feet. As you can see, I'm, I'm ranging at the uh, the 200 meters there. I'm ranging at these three infantry target markers right here that are in the center of my uh, my crosshair there. So I'm going to place my my uh, horizontal line there at the bottom of them, and then you can see where the uh, the two meets. It's basically the the top of the uh, the top of that target is basically on the uh, two hash mark. So that tells me that they're approximately 200 meters away. Now you can see if I if I put the thing at the bottom, obviously they're not a thousand meters away where the where the 10 is. So uh, that's kind of that's pretty quick method of how you use that to range. It can be used for vehicles as well, but the vehicles keep in mind are taller, so it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit less accurate if you're using binoculars to try and uh, try and range vehicles. But it's the same idea. You place the uh, horizontal line at the vehicle base, the wheels or tracks, and then wherever the uh, the top number that's on top of the vehicle, that is your approximate range. And as you can see, the two isn't even above the vehicle, so I can tell that that vehicle is within 100 meters. Now I'm going to demonstrate just the uh, the wire guided missiles uh, or the uh, the tow and the uh, the co the uh, coordinate the anti-tank, just give a quick rundown of these because these things are vital in killing uh, heavy vehicles like tanks or BMPs or BTRs or IFVs or whatever you're fighting. So uh, this is the American tow. It's really nice. It's got a ranging thing that you can see down there in red and it's got a zoom that you can hit with Q uh, as in Quebec. So it's pretty good. The tow, um, I'll go ahead and fire it over here. So after a short delay, it will fire, and you can see the wire going out there, and we have a hit at 507 meters. So that's the tow. We'll go to the cornet now. This is the Russian version, the laser-guided version. Really not much difference between these two, uh, with the exception that the cornet does not have a uh, digital rangefinder there. I'm just going to go ahead and take a shot at this uh, logistics truck just to demonstrate what it does. So once you click, you'll have a short delay and then the uh, rocket will go and it will track on wherever your uh, reticle or crosshairs are. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a shot at this thing and blow it up. Oh, didn't blow it up, that's okay. You get the idea. 
The final thing that I'm going to show is uh, how to use some of the command actions. So for that, I'm going to respawn really quick and pop into a vehicle and see if we can't do some damage to it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hop in one of the Mat Vs and see if we can demonstrate an airstrike on a vehicle just using command actions. The tactical support, that is. So we'll pull this guy out over here away from our base. And like I said earlier, you do have to be near a fully built uh, spawn bunker or hab in order to use the tactical support. And you must have a commander, which is vital. You can see your commander by pressing the M, uh, not M, disregard, the enter key. And you can see that I am hot glue gun and I am the commander. So I'm going to go ahead and park this and hop out. And then we'll go ahead and call an airstrike in on it and see its effect. We'll see if it blows up. Sometimes the vehicle uh, stuff is a little screwy in in the training range. That's why that logistics truck didn't blow up when I shot it with the t with the uh, anti tank missile. All right, so my command actions are online. Uh, tactical support requests can be called in by any squad lead, and how you do that as squad lead, you press the T or Tango key, and this icon here that looks like a star with lightning bolts come out of it, that is your TAC support request. The best way to do this is to do it with your binoculars. It's going to get you the most accurate. So I'm going to call in a request on this vehicle, and I just go here, click that, and it's going to tell me to confirm my request on the map. Now how we're going to do that, since I'm the commander, I use the uh, commander menu, which is a default caps lock. So you go ahead and press that, and then we can see our, our strategic stuff here. We have a UAV and then uh, A-10, artillery, static, and creeping. Now, I can see my support request that I called in on top of the vehicle here, and it'll have a 60-second window where you need to go in here if you're the commander. You go in here, right-click, and either approve or deny. Once I approve this, I'm going to back out, go into my enter menu, disregard, why can't I do this? I'm going to accept it. There it goes. Okay. Once Now now that it's accepted, I will go ahead and call in an A-10 strike. And you can range it anywhere between 20 meters and 60 meters of strafe. So I'm just going to do 20 meters just to demonstrate. And we'll click that, and now it's in route. UAVs do not need a uh, tactical support request from another squad lead to call in. You can just call that in anywhere. You just click, and then you can dial up how big of a radius you want to uh, you want to recon. Alright, my cast is coming in, so we'll see if we can take out this vehicle with an 810. See if it does anything. Here it comes. Alright. Well, we hit it. I didn't quite do what I expected, but... Good enough. So keep in mind uh, things as a squad leader or commander. Typically, you are never going to want to use an A A-10 strike on a vehicle. It's just kind of a waste because you're probably not going to hit it. If you do hit it, you might not blow it up. And it they can move unless the vehicle uh, has had its tires taken out or its tracks taken out. I really wouldn't recommend it unless you're really, really desperate. Uh, typically, you're going to use a airstrike like that, the A-10 or the artillery on top of a base like this to neutralize it or soften a point. Well, that concludes our first introduction uh, to a few of the basics of squad leading and uh, the game of squad. Thanks for watching. The next video will go over some vehicle operations, how to track a vehicle, shooting some rockets, things like that. See you there.